Hi, everyone. I'm excited to be here today to talk to you about some of the miracle stories that are happening right here in our own city, in our own state, every day. My name is Tony Kosha, and the title of our show is Tony's 50,000 Coincidence Miracles. Please note, uh, this show is not about religion, and we're not trying to change anyone's religion, and we're not trying to get you to join any religion. Uh, it's just about miracle stories. I don't know of any religion on the planet that doesn't talk about miracles. Uh, that's why religions begin, because they have something that's telling them there's really a God. But we're not going to get into that. We're going to just talk about miracles and leave the decisions about all that up to you. So we don't care what religion you are. Uh, we just want to talk about miracles. Uh, if you are an atheist, uh, I, I think you'll enjoy the program as well, although I can't guarantee you'll remain an atheist very long after you hear uh, many, many convincing stories, uh, coincidence kinds of stories about miracles. Uh, you can email me your own stories if you wish. Um, we'll try to use all we can on the show. I can't guarantee we will, depending on volume and time. But you're welcome to send your stories on to us, and we will mention them when we can. Uh, you can send them to the following email address. Um, uh, but please notice that if we do use your story, we won't mention your name. We'll keep you anonymous. And we suggest that in your story, when you send it to us, don't use your correct name. That way, anyone listening will not be able to figure out that it was you that sent the story in. Uh, the email address you can send your stories to uh, is very easy to remember. It consists of two words and three numbers. The first word is Tony, spelled T O N Y. And the second word is and, spelled A N D. And the numbers are 777. So once again, the name is Tony and 777 at AOL.com. Well, let us begin. I hope you'll all be able to stop whatever you're doing and just focus on today's message because it's quite a very meaningful message. It's a life-changing message. Um, and I'll start out with telling you that uh, in the Bible, in the book of Mark ch uh, chapter 16, verse 20. So it's at the end of the book of Mark. At the end of the book of Mark, chapter 16, verse 20, it explains that people who go out and preach or go out and tell the good news or go out and tell people about God, people who do that are usually blessed by God in ways that indicates that God is very pleased with them and also God showing the people who are listening uh, to whoever is preaching about him that God is with that person. So simply stated, if you're out there telling people about God and you're doing a fairly decent job of doing it, God sends miracles uh, to encourage you to continue. And he sends miracles so that people listening to you realize that God is uh, using you to deliver the message. And I had one of these experiences happen this past summer in the year 2023. Um, you know, we have to put shows on as they come to us. And so this has had to wait up until now, but I'm glad to be able to get it in now. Uh, so I'm going to relate to you what happened. And it was a life-changing thing for both me and for the people listening. Uh, this was like the first day of the college student summer break. It was the first summer day of vacation. Colleges were getting out. And I was inspired by God to go to the beach, uh, Connecticut Beach, and walk along the beach, pass out cards, and you know, encourage people to get our book or go on our website. It's all free. Go on our website at wcatradio.com slash miracles slash, once again, wcatradio.com slash miracles slash go to that website and you can listen to everything for free and so I was encouraging people along the beach to do that but I was inspired on this day when I came across these college students uh, to tell them some specific things summarize some things that I've told at many lectures I give in schools and churches and clubs and family gatherings I give several pointed and specific lectures to help people, you know, quickly and easily start to have conversations with God. So I 
summarized some things. And on this particular day, I was inspired by God to use that and give a summary. Well, what happened was, when I, I didn't know this was going to happen, when I get to the beach, uh, I was inspired which beach to go to and whether to go left or right and what time to be there, etc. And what happened was I arrived just pretty close to the same time that 15 young men and women, it was about 50-50, about seven men and uh, eight women from college. They were all together. They went to the same college. They were all friends, and they were at the beach. And I was inspired, you know, to walk up and approach them and tell them a little bit about me and my book and ask them if I could give them a synopsis. And they said, sure. They were delighted. It was like, you know, I'm I'm free entertainment, right? I go along and I give them something for a few minutes for free, and it's free entertainment at the beach. So they were interested. And as I was explaining what I'm about to tell you, they were really listening intently. I was so amazed how attentive they were. Uh, I don't know, it might be because they just finished all their exams and they were tuned in to uh, focusing. I don't know. But what happened was I was inspired to tell them some things as follows. First, I stressed to them that mankind has documented the lives of 10,000 saints in history. And I told them, I'm not preaching religion. I'm not trying to preach religion or tell you what to do with your religion. I'm just trying to talk about some facts that are, it's very helpful to hear about these facts. So the, mankind has experienced 10,000 saints over the last 2,000 years, and we have documented stories. We could make 10,000 movies right now because we have documented stories and we could produce 10,000 movies. Uh, and that's pretty significant because there's some commonality in the saints. And what I explain to them is if you read the lives of the saints, Google any name you want, and you can do that too, just Google any saint's name you want, you'll notice when you read their life story that practically everyone you read about has mental telepathy with God. God speaks to them, but it's mental telepathy. And I've asked God to explain this to me, you know, why doesn't he just talk to people? Why does it have to be mental telepathy? And God inspired me, uh, and he said, in my mind anyway, if he spoke audibly with sound to 7 billion people on the planet, he would be very noisy all day long. Plus, everybody he's talking to uh, would have no privacy because everybody else would hear whatever he's saying. So God said, it's pretty obvious. If I'm talking to 7 billion people and I want our conversations to be private, I have to do it with mental telepathy. So the saints would ask me mentally questions and I respond to them mentally. Uh, and the proof of this, the proof that God really is talking to us uh, with mental telepathy is a few things like as following. Uh, Joan of Arc was about 14 years old. Joan of Arc, uh, she ran the French army. She won many wars, many battles, saved France uh, in the process. And she kept saying how uh, St. Michael was telling her things, God was telling her things, angels were telling her things. But nobody around her was hearing any of the voices. So that's number one, proof of mental telepathy. The next thing is the word idea. The word idea is two words. It's I plus Deo. And that word is a Latin word because Deo is the Latin word for God. So the saints who spoke Latin, they formed this word in history. They would talk to each other and say, hey, I got another ideo from God. Did, did you get any ideos from God today? The word ideo means I got a thought from Deo, and Deo is the Latin word for God. The other word is saints made this word up as well. They say to each other, I got inspired. Well, inspired is two words. It's in, meaning incoming. Inspired means the Spirit of God spoke to me. So when you get inspired, that's God talking to you by the Spirit. When you get an ideo, an idea, that's God talking to you because God is deo. And women's intuition and men's intuition as well, by the way. But the word intuition is two words. It's in and tuition. And tuition is something you pay for being tutored. So the word intuition implies you are being tutored on the inside. Well, what is it inside of you that's tutoring you? The Bible says in John 14, 26, the Holy Spirit will teach you all things. Well, if the Holy Spirit is teaching you all things, then that's who's tutoring you on the inside. All right, so there's three words, idea, inspiration, intuition, and even premonition, but I don't get into explaining that. Uh, and Joan of Arc's life all proved that the saints were having mental telepathy because they made up these words. 
So I, I tell them that, you know, they can ask God questions in their mind all day long. And I tell them, in fact, you get 100 ideas a day now already. From the moment you wake up, you start asking questions like, should I push snooze or not? And then you decide, what should I have for breakfast? What should I, what kind of clothes should I wear? Uh, which car should I use today? Uh, which road should I take to work today, the long way or the short way? Uh, we're, at, we're always asking questions and we're always getting answers and uh, inspirations. So if you ask God a question, then he responds. That's that's all you got to do. Ask God a question and he will respond. Uh, and the Bible's clear about that. Matthew 7, colon 7. Matthew chapter 7, verse 7 says all you got to do is ask um, and he'll answer you. Now, the next thing I told him about was a typical Bible, and I'm not preaching preaching religion. You could look at the Bible as a history book if you want. Uh, Science tells us that um, Adam and Eve existed seven or 8,000 years ago. Seven or 8,000 years ago, Adam and Eve. Well, the Bible starts out with the story of Adam and Eve. So the Bible really documents the historical progression of mankind from Adam and Eve up to uh, the point where Jesus dies and and is around rises from the dead and and ascends into heaven, uh, which was 2,000 years ago. Uh, So really, we have 7,000 to 8,000 years of knowledge just by reading the Bible, which brings us up to today. Well, there's 2,000 pages in a typical Bible, the Old Testament and the New Testament. And here's an amazing thing that I think everybody on the planet really should know. If no one ever told you before, this is going to be a shock, but it's very important. 2,000 pages in the Bible. I read the Bible many, many times, and then one day I read the Bible and I noticed there's a sentence in the Bible that says, only one thing is necessary. Notice again, it says one sentence in the Bible. It says, only one thing is necessary. I'll tell you where it is. It's in the book of Luke, book of Luke chapter 10. So if you remember, God willing, you have 10 fingers. Remember the book of Luke chapter 10, and you'll read it, um, and remember John fourteen twenty six. 26. Right, once again, try to remember Luke chapter 10 and John fourteen twenty six, and that'll convince you that there's only one thing necessary, and that thing is to just ask God questions. That's all you ever have to do. Just ask him questions, and he'll inspire you what to do, and that's all you really ever have to do. I tell people to just try it, and I told these uh, college people as well. Just try it. I said on the way home today, ask God if you should take the long way or the short way driving home and do what he inspires into your mind. Uh, Ask him what movie to go to uh, this weekend. Uh, Go to the movie he tells you or what channel to watch on TV. Do what he tells you. Uh, Should you go to McDonald's or Burger King on the way home or some other place? Ask him which place. Go where he tells you. And you'll, inevitably, you will see miracles when you ask God what to do. If you ask God what to do for two days without stopping, ask him all kinds of small questions like this. You'll start bumping into friends on the road. You'll see somebody hitchhiking because you took the right road. Someone hitchhiking who you know, etc. Uh, who to invite to a party, etc., etc. So just keep asking God what to do and then do the thing which he puts into your mind to do. In summary, you ask God what to do and you do what he inspires, what the, the thought he puts into your mind, that's what you do. If it's something good, you do it. If it's something bad, you don't do it. Because if it's bad, it's something you're confused about because God doesn't ask us to do bad things. When I finished, 15 people stood up and started clapping. Several of them came over and hugged me, and they said they wished they had known this from their pastors. They'd never heard these things before. They said it was life-changing. I didn't realize till the end, but there were other people on blankets sitting around the 15 people, and they also stood up and started clapping. There were about another 15 people all around them that were also excited and happy about the message. Please read Mark 16.20 and John 14.26. Again, Mark 16.20 and John 14.26. God bless you all. I'll talk to you next week. (laughs) 